Welcome to the deep dive. This is where we dig into interesting sources, pull out the core insights, and uh, get you up to speed quickly. Yep. And today we're diving into, well, the cutting edge of AI language models, specifically the ones designed for reasoning. Uh, large reasoning models or LRMs. That's the one. And we're using a really interesting research paper from Apple as our guide. They took this um, very controlled approach to figure out what these models can really do when it comes to thinking. And crucially, where they fall down, That's, where the limits are. Exactly. So our mission today, unpack what this paper found using these clever puzzles. We want to get to the heart of how these models seem to think and maybe more importantly, where that thinking process hits a brick wall. All for you. Okay, let's start at the beginning then. What are these LRMs? And you know, why use puzzles? Why not just use the standard tests? Good question. So think of LRMs as like the next step up from the regular LMs we hear about all the time. LLMs are great with language, spotting patterns, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. LRMs are built specifically to be better at reasoning. They often have these uh, internal thinking steps built in, things like chain of thought or self-reflection. Right, where they supposedly map out the steps before giving an answer. We've seen models like OpenAI's O1, maybe O3, DeepSeek R1, Claude 3.7, Sonnet Thinking, Gemini Thinking. They're all pushing this. And they do look better on paper, on the standard benchmarks anyway. But that's the big question, isn't it? Is it real reasoning? Or is it just, you know, super advanced pattern matching? Are they thinking or just really good mimics? Precisely. And that takes us right to the problem with a lot of the current testing methods. They use established benchmarks, math competitions, coding challenges. The issue being data contamination. Big time. These models have likely seen these problems or very similar ones in their training data, which is vast. Exactly. If a model solves a problem because it essentially memorized it or memorized the type of solution, well, that's not really showing on the spot reasoning, is it? No. Plus, those benchmarks usually just score the final answer. You don't get to see the how. You don't see the thinking process or where it went wrong if it failed. Yeah, and the paper pointed out something really striking about that contamination issue. They looked at math benchmarks, AME24 and AME25. Ah, uh, yes, figure two in the paper. Right. So the thinking models sometimes did better than the non-thinking ones. Okay, fine. But then they actually did worse on AIM E25 than on AIM 24. Even though humans found AIM E25 easier. Wait, what? So the models found the easier test harder. That makes no sense. Exactly. It smells like contamination, right? Their better performance on the older test, AIM E24, was probably because they'd seen similar stuff during training. It just highlights why you need a cleaner test environment. Okay, so that's why they went with puzzles, to get around all that messiness. Precisely. This approach gives them really fine-grained control over how difficult the problem is. That's shown nicely in figure one. And critically, no data contamination. The puzzles are generated based on rules right there and then. Yep. And these puzzles demand reasoning based only on the rules given in the prompt. You can't just pull facts from the training data. It forces them to actually work through it. Plus, because it's all simulated, they can check every single step the model takes. Not just the final answer. They can actually look inside the thinking. So what puzzles did they use? Figure three lays them out. Yeah, four main types. You've got the classic, Tower of Hanoi, moving disks, rules about smallest on top. Mm -hmm. Complexity just explodes with the number of disks and it's exponential. Okay, then. Checker jumping, swapping red and blue checkers on a line. Complexity there scales with N, the number of checkers. And river crossing, getting people or items across a river, thinking about boat space, who can be left with whom. Complexity based on N pairs. Right. And finally, blocks world, just rearranging stacks of blocks into a target layout. Again, complexity tied to N, the number of blocks. Each one gives a knob to turn up the difficulty. All right, makes sense. So they have this controlled setup. What did they actually find when they started turning those knobs? Let's hit key finding one, the three performance regimes. Okay, so they compared thinking models, Claude 3.7, Sonnet thinking, DeepSeek R1, with their non-thinking versions using the same amount of compute. That's figures four and five. And they saw three clear zones pop out depending on how hard the puzzle was. Exactly. Zone one, low complexity, the easy stuff. And here, surprisingly, the standard non-thinking models, they often did just as well, sometimes even better. Better. Oh. And they were more efficient, used fewer compute tokens. It seems like for simple tasks, that extra thinking machinery in the LRMs was just overhead didn't help, might have even slightly hindered. Interesting. So the thinking isn't always better, but what about zone two? Medium complexity. Now this is where the thinking model started to shine. 
They showed a clear advantage, that extra processing, the step-by-step -step stuff, it actually helped them get better accuracy on these trickier problems. Okay, so the thinking does pay off, but only when the problem gets hard enough that the simple approach fails. Seems like it, but then, zone three, high complexity. They're really tough puzzles. Yeah, and here, uh-oh, both types of models just collapsed. Accuracy dropped straight to zero. Yeah, zero, not just low, but zero. Zero. And it didn't matter how much compute they threw at it. The thinking models, okay, they delayed the collapse a bit, maybe handled slightly harder problems before failing, but they still failed completely. They hit a hard limit. That collapse sounds critical. Let's zoom in on that key finding too. The collapse and this really weird pattern with how much effort they put in. Right. Figure six, top part, shows it clearly. Accuracy goes down, down, down as complexity increases, then boom, off a cliff. Yeah. Zero. It's not gradual failure, it's total system breakdown. And the effort part, that's the truly strange bit, right? They measured effort by thinking tokens used. Yeah, figure six, bottom also figure 13. So initially, as problems got harder, the models used more thinking tokens. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Harder problem, think harder. Totally intuitive. But just as they got close to that cliff, that point where accuracy was about to plummet to zero. They actually started using fewer thinking tokens. They backed off on the effort. Hang on, they used less effort when facing the hardest problems they could possibly attempt, even though they had budget left? <laughs> that seems completely backwards. It's super counterintuitive. You'd expect them to double down and use all the resources. Why would they do that? Well, the researchers suggest this points to a fundamental scaling limitation. It's like their internal thinking process just gets overwhelmed past a certain point. It can't cope with the complexity. And instead of trying harder, it sort of disengages or becomes less effective using fewer resources. So not only do they fail, but their attempt itself starts to crumble right at the edge. That's yeah. The, yeah, that's a big deal. Definitely. Now, Key Finding 3 digs even deeper. They actually looked inside the thoughts. Ah, using that simulator setup again. Seeing the step-by-step -step reasoning trace. Exactly. And they found these really clear patterns, again, depending on complexity. This is figure 7a and 7b. For the simple problems, the models often found the right answer quite early in their thought process. Okay, good. But then they didn't stop. They kept exploring incorrect options after finding the right one, like overthinking it, wasting compute. Huh. Inefficient. What about medium complexity? There, the pattern flipped. They'd explore wrong answers first. The correct steps, or the final solution, if they found it, only showed up later in the trace. They had to wade through mistakes. So self-correction is working, but it takes effort. Seems like it. Mm. But then, high complexity of the collapse zone. Forget finding the right answer. They couldn't even find correct intermediate steps most of the time. It was just a mess of errors throughout the thought process. Yikes. So looking inside confirms the limitations pretty starkly. It shows the inefficiency and the ultimate breakdown. Yeah. And beyond these main findings, they also stumbled upon some really, like, puzzling behaviors. Things that make you question what's really going on. Oh. Well, one huge one was how they handled explicit algorithms. For Tower of Hanoi, the researchers literally gave the model the correct step-by-step -step algorithm, told it exactly what to do. You can see this in figures 8a and 8b. Okay, so you give it the cheat sheet. Performance should skyrocket, right? That's the hard part, Doug. You'd absolutely think so. But, yeah. nope. Performance didn't improve. The accuracy collapse still happened at basically the same point. Seriously, even when told exactly how to solve it step by step. Seriously, it suggests the problem isn't just finding the plan, but maybe also executing it reliably step after step and verifying those steps. Following logical instructions consistently seems to be a challenge too. That is deeply weird. It points to a limitation in just applying rules, maybe. Could be. Another really odd thing was the inconsistency across different puzzles. A model might be great at one type, but terrible at another, even if they seem to require similar amounts of, say, planning depth or number of moves. Look at figures 8C, 8 tenths, and figure 10. Okay, give me an example. All right, so quad 3.7 sonnet thinking. It got almost perfect accuracy on Tower of Hanoi with five discs. That takes 31 moves, a pretty long sequence. Okay, 31 moves, pretty good. But that same model completely failed river crossing with just three pairs of items. Which only needs 11 moves. 11 moves. It aced 31, but failed 11. Yep. And often in River Crossing, it would make its first mistake super early, like around move four, 
Whereas on the harder Tower of Hanoi problems it could solve before collapsing, errors might not happen until way later, like move 100 on bigger versions. So it handles a long, complex sequence in one context, but falls apart on a much shorter sequence in another right at the start. Yeah. That, it doesn't sound like general reasoning power. Exactly. And the paper suggests maybe it's about the training data again. Maybe puzzles like Tower of Hanoi are common examples online, so the model has kind of seen the pattern. But river crossing, especially with more than two pairs, might be much rarer. So the model might be relying on recognizing familiar patterns more than truly reasoning from the ground up based on the rules you give it. If it's an unfamiliar type of problem structure, it struggles, even if it's technically simpler. So it's less about pure logic, maybe more about pattern matching to stuff it's seen, and if it hasn't seen that pattern. That seems to be a strong possibility raised by these inconsistencies. It certainly challenges the generalizable aspect of their reasoning. Okay, let's try and wrap this up then. What are the main things you, our listener, should take away from this deep dive into the Apple paper? Well, first up, these LRMs, these thinking models, do show better reasoning than standard ones, but really only when the problem is moderately complex. Mm -hmm. Not too easy, not too hard. Right. Second, they hit a definite wall at high complexity. Accuracy just collapses. And weirdly, their effort, measured by thinking tokens, actually drops right before that collapse, suggests a core scaling issue. Third, looking inside those thoughts shows problems. They can overthink easy problems, and their self-correction just fails completely on hard ones. And finally, some really puzzling stuff. They struggle even when you give them the algorithm, and they perform really inconsistently across different types of puzzles. This hints maybe they lean heavily on recognizing patterns from training data, not just pure, flexible reasoning. Yeah, it definitely throws some cold water on the idea that they have this robust general reasoning engine ready to go for anything. They're amazing tools, yes, but they have these surprising, maybe fundamental limits. Which brings us to a final thought for you to chew on. If these super advanced models, even with their special thinking processes, hit hard limits on defined rule-based puzzles, if they struggle with clear instructions and act inconsistently, what does that really imply about how reliable they are for tackling messy, complex, real-world problems? You know, problems where the rules aren't clear, the info is fuzzy, and there's no perfect algorithm waiting. Yeah, that's the big question hanging in the air, isn't it? Definitely something to consider. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Hope you feel a bit more informed about the state of AI reasoning.